everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Welcome fabricators. I've been doing a presentation for a little while on air handling 101 and data pipelines for different community events and even internal Microsoft events. And one of the things that I cover in there as a bit of a climax to it is how we do error logging. Typically in a pipeline, we would handle error logging by probably calling a stored procedure to log in a SQL database, Azure SQL, Fabric SQL, SQL MI, or we might actually have a sub pipeline. So we can use that sub pipeline over and again that's calling the stored procedure. Well, when you call that sub pipeline, it takes a little while to spin up the pipeline and run. Typically it runs for at least a minute and a half, depending on what we're logging. When we introduced user data functions, which is what this video is about today, we changed the game with that. User data functions are a function that we can create within Microsoft Fabric. We can use this in notebooks, we can use this in pipelines, and they are fast. As a matter of fact, they are two to three times faster if you wanna log directly into a SQL database errors or telemetry you may be getting from your data pipelines. You know what? Uh, I don't just wanna tell you about it. I wanna show it to you. So we're gonna do an end-to-end -end tutorial right now and look at this together. Here I am in my Microsoft Fabric and I'm going to create a data pipeline because we're gonna use this data pipeline throughout the demo for our function. I'm gonna name it something exactly what it is, error handling UDF, because that's where we're gonna test. Now I have this and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an activity. Now I wanna log errors, so what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna get a fail activity because it's gonna fail every single time. Let's configure this real quick. I'm just gonna go into settings and I'm going to set the fail message to be, this will always fail because it's always going to fail. And then for an error code, have a little fun, 007. Nice, easy code to remember. Let's go back to our folder and let's create a user data function that we can utilize for the rest of this. I type in the name. There it is. Let's make this exactly something really simple. UDF underscore error logging. And let's click create. Now, once this creates, we need to click on new function. And when we do, you'll see it'll give us a sample code immediately. And there's the name in the Explorer. Hello underscore fabric. This is kind of a nice little hello world. Now, if I wanted to, I could go to edit and I've got sample code for warehouses and for lake houses for Fabric SQL database. Um, also, we've got it for data manipulation and UDF data types because we may want to use this particularly in a notebook, which is another place we can call it later, not this time. And then Cosmos DB because Cosmos is now a part of Microsoft Fabric as well. OK, for this, we're going Fabric SQL database because that's where I'm logging my errors write one row of data into the table for SQL database. You can see, how do I add another function? Well, it just adds it in the code body. Now, as a matter of fact, if I wanted to get rid of one, let's get rid of hello fabric. I could just highlight this code, delete it. And you'll notice in the function explorer, it's now gone. Now, looking at this, you can see the first thing it asks for is an alias for your database. Well, what's that? Well, we got to connect to a database. So let's go to manage connections and let's make a connection to a database. I'm going to go to my bball fabcon fabric sql database where we'll be logging this information. It gives me an alias and I will need that for my code. You can see where it asks for it right here, alias for sql database. So let's go ahead and let's put that in place. Now let's go to the database and create the structures we need. I'm going to create a table called job status and it's going to have all the different fields I'd like to log from my job when it fails. I'm also going to create a stored procedure. This could have just been an insert into the table, but I think it's more realistic to have an execution of a stored proc. I think that's what you're gonna do. And then I'm querying the table to see if we have anything in there. We just created the table, so it's empty. Nothing to see yet. Now let's go back over to our function and let's put the code in place. I'm putting in insert error two, and you can see I've got pipeline name, run date, run ID, pipeline status, pipeline ID, error message, error code. And all of those are also in the execute description as well. And then I've got those question marks, which acts as an array to allow these values to come in. Now, everything is set up and configured and it looks good. So what we can do is we could go ahead, but there's one thing I want you to see first, run date. This is really important. We're going to be getting the run date as a UTC time. And in order for us to pass that as a string, convert it to a date, it needs to be declared as a date time two. Otherwise, this will throw an error if it's a date time or just a date field. Date time two, and it'll do the auto conversion. Now let's go ahead and publish this. It's going to publish in about three to four minutes. I've sped this up so you don't have to wait through that. So it's not going to be quite this fast. Keep that in mind. 
But when it does finally publish, you'll be able to then use the function. So let's go ahead and let's go use this now. In my error handling, I'm going to come over. I'm going to go to a little bit more and I'm going to get my functions. There we go. Now that we've got our function, I'm going to name this exactly what it is, log error to database. And now let's do an on failure condition to make sure it executes. Why on failure? Well, the first one's always going to fail. I make a connection and then I select my workspace. Then I select my function and I'm sorry, my user data functions. And then the code, the function inside of there, insert error two. Remember, that's what we've got. Now we're going to add all these variables. So first one up is pipeline name. So we go to system variables and there's our pipeline name. Go ahead and we get that. Then we need run date. Remember, that's our date time too. How do we get that? Well, we're going to go over and we're going to look at functions. And then we're going to go to date functions and we're going to go to UTC now. That'll give us the date. For run ID, we come back over here. We go to system variables and we get our pipeline run ID. Next up, we're going to get the pipeline status. And this time, where are we going? No, we're going to the activity. The activity and we're just going to change output to dot status. And that'll give us the succeeded or failed of the activity. We expect this to be failed. And then pipeline ID back to system variables. And then what we'll do is we'll select the pipeline ID. Next up, we've got the error message. Very important. So how do we get the error message? Once again, we go to our activity, we get rid of output, and we say error.message. And that will give us the error message. And then we want the error code, right? Because maybe we need it for a support ticket. Again, the fail activity, and we replace output with error.error code. Now let's go ahead and click OK. Everything should be configured, and we could go ahead and we can run this. We click Save. We click Run. I fast forwarded through this again. This took close to about 40 seconds, not super long, less than a second for failed, 22 seconds to write this to the database. Remember that. That's really, really quick. How do we look at this? Boom, a little bit of fabric magic. This is always going to fail, error code 007. Now let's go ahead and let's make this a little bit more real world. I'm going to add a web activity and I'm specifically setting this up so it will always fail. I've got an error mess code that creates an error 404 because I'm going to go to a web page that doesn't exist. If you need that, you could Google or Bing that. You could use it just fine. I've already created a connection with this and it uses a get functionality. Once this is in place, what am I going to do? I'm going to copy my function because I've already got it there and I've already got it filled out. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put an on failure condition because again, our, our web one is going to fail as well. And now there's three things that we need to change because all of this are going to the fail one and I want it to go to the web one activity. I could just add that activity and override all this, but the easiest way for me to do it is just take web one and I'm going to replace fail one with it. So there's our status and then our error.message, and then we're going to do the exact same thing for the error.code. Nice and easy. And now we'll get the logging for the failed one activity and for the web one activity. Go ahead and save this, and let's run this. And as this executes, there we go. You see very quickly, 14 seconds this time to log that database here. Compare that to a pipeline. There's some fabric magic right there. And you can see there's our error code 007 again, and also 2108 for the HTML issue that we've got. This is a lot faster than calling a sub pipeline to be able to do this. And I absolutely love user data functions for this. So sound off. You know where we want to keep this going. Uh, down in the comments, are you using user data functions? Are you excited about this? Are you using them in notebooks? Are you using them in pipelines, or do you want to see an example of one of these? Okay, thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. As always, be good to one another out there. Bye, everybody.